Welcome to implement an interface to extend an app in App Source. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, one of the new things that we have gotten in recent versions of Business Central are interfaces. So, what is an interface? Well, an interface is a a contract, so to speak. It, it's a way to say that I, as an interface, expose certain functionality, certain features, and um, you can be allowed to implement me. So the interface will say we have these functions and then a code unit somewhere will actually be the one uh, implementing the, the, the functions. That also means that we can have multiple code units implement the same interface. Um, this is a, this, from a, a development standpoint, this is an, a concept that has existed in other languages for, for ages, decades. Um, but in AL, it's new. Um, and I haven't seen that many uh, examples of interfaces actually being used in software out there. Uh, but we, and, and by we, I mean my, my day job, because this is clearly the night at this point. My day job at, at eFocus, we recently uh, uh, announced and, and, and published a, a new app on, on App Source called the Cloud Replicator, which is a replication engine that will replicate data from BC to cloud database somewhere. Um, and the inner workings of that app is actually done through an interface with the clear intent of the app being able to be extended. So I thought, let me actually use this as an example of how to use an interface. So let me, let me show you how this is going to work. Here is Business Central, and I have the main screen of the Cloud Replicator open, where you specify what tables you want to replicate, and you specify where they're going. And um, if I edit the list, I could go and say I wanted to replicate a new table to somewhere. Uh, but maybe I want to replicate to something that's not on this list. So um, what I do is that I fire up the good old Visual Studio Code and I just created a blank app here. Uh, and what I did was that I created let me actually make this bigger so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I added a dependency to the Cloud Replicator. So by ID, by, let's see if this format, ID, name, publisher, version. Um, and, and that is basically just the information that you can find in extension management because the app is now installed, Cloud Replicator is installed here, so we have the name, the, the version, the publisher, the app ID. So, and right now it's published as dev, but that it would be the same if it was published from, from App Source. I'm just running here my Docker image. So, step one, add the dependency, download uh, symbols, so we have those. And we can see that now we have symbols for this one. So I can I can go in and I can see what do we have of symbols. Well, let's check what do we have any enums? What do we do? We have an enum called a data destination. So what do we have in that? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, which were the option we saw. So let's start by extending this enum. Um, and we can do that by, let's add a uh, destination, wow, destination enum extension dot al. And this is, a, oh, we'll do it up here. This is an enum extension. Uh, my destination with a T. Um, oops, and that one extends 
data destination EFQ. Oh, we can just get rid of this one. And we could see that we have one, two, three, four, five. So we can call this, we can just call it six, but then maybe myself uh, in, in another capacity, we're going to add that. So maybe we'll call it 99. And let's pretend that we're implementing MongoDB because I actually want to implement MongoDB for the Cloud Replicator, but that's not a discussion. We add a caption, uh, MongoDB, and in the newest versions uh, of, of this, we also had the option of actually linking uh, the code in it to, uh, to uh, an enum. I'm not using this. So in this example, we're not going to do that. That's, we're going to do that in a different way. So now we added our destination. So let's deploy this app and see how that looks. And what I also did before I started the video was that in my launch station, I found the, the page number for the, um, for the Cloud Replicator start page. So when I deploy, I actually go to the, that page of another app. So even though I'm deploying from my app, then nobody is, there's no rule that you can only set the startup data, uh, up, startup object ID to something in your app or in base app, you can just set it to, to any page. So in this case, I have set it to the table mapping page. So I, now I hopefully we can go in and look at destinations and we have Mongo as an option. So that, that's great. I want to replicate table four currencies just for that company. And I want to replicate that to, to Mongo. Excellent. And, and you can see here that the, the active column so right now, this is the only table that's active. So let's run this and see what the app was saying. saying. And we got a, uh, let's actually just skip out of the debugger here. And no destination selected for this one. Uh, kind of weird. I, I should have a talk with the guy who made that error message. Um, so let's, let's add that. So what we're going to do now is that we need to find the interface and hope, thankfully we can see it here that we have an interface here. And, um, if I look at the interface, we can see that this interface has a connect function, a check table function, an add table function, a insert function and a delete table function. So what we need to do now is that we need to go and create ourselves a, um, a code unit that implements all that. So let's call the code unit for MongoDB. And that's code unit MongoDB. And we need to tell that this code unit is, is implementing something. So this one is implementing the data provider which is the, the name of it. And you can see as soon as we did this, we got squiggly line saying, oh, MongoDB does not implement blah, 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 those five functions. So what I can do here again is that I can actually go to this one and say open symbols and tap, and then let's go back to, uh, where is the Mongo here? So we can see that we need to implement a function called connect and that returns a Boolean. There we go. We can let's add an error here saying Mongo DB is not yet implemented. Explanation mark. And then let's check one thing because now let's check the mouse over and see, oh, the error message about connect not being implemented has has gone gone away. So so now we can see that check table, add table, insert, delete table. So let's quickly 
uh, a check table and needs a table named text and returns a boolean. Um, and then we got a add table that also gets a table name that's text and returns boolean. And then I think the, the difficult one is insert that takes a record ref, meaning that's the record that we want to add to. Uh, let's actually make this a bit smaller. The, the record ref we want to add to the cloud table. Add date to primary key. Um, that because we got some fancy replication where we can create a new copy of a table each day to create timeline data. Um, uh, and the date here is the date we want to replicate. So even if you're replicating across midnight, you'll always get data tagged with the same date that are within the same replication. Run, uh, begin, end. And let's check up here. So now we only want need to implement delete table. So procedure delete table table name text and boolean and begin end. So now the red squiggly line disappeared. So we have fulfilled our contract to the interface by creating these five functions. They're not working, but but that's the least of our problems now. So as I was saying, I was I'm I'm not currently using the uh, the, the way to link an enum directly to a, uh, a a code unit to preserve. There was something with version seventeen. I can't remember why we did that. Anyway, um, so what we need to do is that we need to make sure that this code unit actually gets selected at the right time. So let's add another one, another code in here called events. Code unit, this one, wire, wire, wire up code unit. Doesn't really matter. And, and we need to create an event subscriber on a code unit. And the code unit is the, I think, let me see what it's called. I think it's called the Cloud Replicator Engine. And let's see what events we have here. On selecting custom destination, that's kind of what we want to do. And we'll just put something here. So we got true, true. And what do we get as parameters for this? Uh, let's call this. So what I usually do whenever I create uh, the functions that are subscribing to a, a uh, an event that I kind of take the event's name and then remove the on so we can see that this is what it is. So there are three parameters. There's a table map, there's a interface, and there's a handled boolean. So what we can do here is say that if table map, that's, so table map is the record we have here. So if table map dot destination equal table map destination Mongo, then we want destination to be, and what do we want destination to be? Well, let's create a variable here. So let's create a Mongo DB variable type code, type code unit. Oh, it's hard to say. That's the MongoDB code we just created. And tell the destination is equal to Mongo. And then let's tell the event that we actually did this. So the event gives us three parameters, the, the, the table information and the uh, the interface variable to populate. So, so the way you make an interface type variable uh, and <laughs> no, it's hard to say. The way you make a interface type variable work is that you need to actually assign it to a code unit that implements it. Uh, so in this case, we have a code unit Mongo. We say that destination is equal to Mongo. When then we tell handle this, that we have we got this. So so the app will say, oh, 
somebody is handling this. I will not worry. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's um, let's try it out. I will compile. See. And we got this, and I'll hit manual run now, and let's see what happens. We got the debugger stopping us on the connect where we wrote the error message. So I hit a five twice, and MongoDB is not yet implemented. So let, let's repeat what we did here. Um, because I think that's pretty cool, actually. and. Uh, I can only hope that more more apps and base functionality in the future will kind of do stuff like this. So we extended a caption. Sorry, we, we extended an enum with a, a new value, in this case Mongo. Then we created a new code unit that implemented the interface that the, the app is exposing. We implemented all the functions that uh, the interface requires us to do, so the, the contract is happy. And then in case of, of, of this app, we subscribe to an event that would make sure that this got selected at the right spot. So that's it. So from a plumbing perspective, there's a handful of lines here, there's uh, the enum value, and then that's just the implementation. Uh, and that's enough to take an app like this because this app has been designed from the bottom up to support these things. So this was built on an interface to begin with. Um, and, and all the other engines in here uh, are built the same way. Uh, so we're just doing more of what the app is already doing. Um, of course, if we want to do this right, we need to make sure that we in, in the setup have fields to handle Mongo setup and stuff and stuff like that. But it's doable uh, and, and it kind of avoids all the crazy events and stuff like this that you just, you know, you implement a code unit, you can test this as a code unit because testing events are pretty hard uh, because you need to test somebody in somebody else's code and stuff like that. But here, you, you this is easily to create a test uh, code unit on and, and, and run a test against something like this because as long as you fulfill the interface, you're good. Anyway, that's it for uh, for this video. I hope this at least, well, if you want to implement a, uh, a, a database engine for a cloud replicator, I'll not stop you, I'll even help you. But I hope this at least in, perhaps inspired you to add more interfaces to your, to your own apps and uh, look them up in, in other apps and see if, if, if they're there. Um, or poke the developer say, hey, couldn't you get, get me an interface to do that so I can implement my own? There's also a couple of interfaces in the base app that you can go play, play around with. Prices, sales prices is one of them. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what your feelings are on interfaces, and uh, I will read and comment as usual. I read every single comment. I truly enjoy that. Anyway, until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.